things are changing very fast and Kenyans are becoming more enlightened as the days go. There is a recent report, and I've read I think now too, that William Bruto's popularity in the mountain has been going down six months after he was sworn in office. And there is a lot of discussion going down here that what could be behind it? And I don't think it's only in the mountain. Even if you realize, if you want to know that um, numbers are not good, I want to give you, I want you to do a very easy exercise. If you normally go to town, just pity to headline, newspaper headlines, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, just those four days. Then count between those four days, and you can even, if you can access newspaper headlines for the last one week, then you check between the name Uhuru, Raila, and Ruto. How many times are the newspaper guys putting the name of William Ruto in that newspaper? I'm looking much the print because the print is normally the one of media. It goes so for them, they plan for what people are going to buy for the whole day. And like the broadcast that is a transient media to mean for them, and then they are a bit flexible. You will realize that the headlines are more the preference on Roy Lodinga and Uhuru Kenyatta. Sorry. So, um, there is something <laughs> that you can get from it. The numbers are worrying. And um, top on that list, I know we've all, we've, we have been speaking about unmet pledges, even though there is little ripple effect in the economy, even from the much hyped Hustler Fund. There is no feel good into it. Uh, probably we'll have to revisit that in my analysis so that you look at the success rate. Even metrics of measuring the success of that is not normally available because is it a map about the number of people that subscribe or how that money has been converted uh, to businesses that then can pay the tax. So that question has not been answered. So I want us to make these two observations that they inform this. Dennis Itumbi today activated something I normally believe is a propaganda spewing machine called Hustler Nation Intelligence Bureau, <laughs> NHIB. That machine was used, and, and by the way, it was a social media model. It was used in the wake um, uh, to support William Bruto's political campaigns the last general election and it's been credited to supporting William Bruto's messaging because politics is not about the straight talk it's also the straight talk but you must also have you also must tweak your messages so that machine has been activated <laughs> and today it was all of us speaking about an imaginary meeting that you know was held somewhere in November, and not of Bukati that um, Matiangi was appointed to become the Azimio chair if Uru Kenyatta exits. And of course, <laughs> I by the way, I'm a fan of it. I follow it because you get to understand. You see the way there is very scanty, scanty messages without the five Ws where who uh, and, and everything. It's just skeletal of information. So that's why for me, I believe. It is normally a propaganda spring machine. That machine has been activated. And it's activated to support one person, the popularity of William Samoy Ruto. Dennis Itumbi is directly answerable to President Ruto. Number two, if you're keen enough, you realize that Ruto has been going to churches in the mountain 
I think he has gone to Tarkanit, he has gone to Embu, Kirinyaga. Uh, I was in Laikipia. I think he's yet to go to Mur. I think yes, he, he Murangi went Muranga first. He is he's yet to go to Kiambu and maybe Nyeri, but we're told Nyeri will be a mother of all the homecoming <laughs> events by cutters of US truly regarding Shagwa. So is it exalt Amenda? Despite the fact that this is his voting zone, he is avoiding contacting public contact with the people. In fact, all those meetings are closed to meetings. Even the one that is in uh, is prayer rallies, not prayer rallies. Those they're not those political rallies are rallies in tents where the attendance is restricted. And of course, the orderly man and what is done, he's not going to the ground. Compared to, look at the Nyanza tour, political. Even though Kulikwana Yokuka, but he had to go to talk to the people and interact with the population. He was in Western, we also saw him going out, and he was in Transoya. He also came out and spoke to people. We are waiting at how the one from Makweni would look like. So that's what we are saying. But those two signs tell you that things are not good. This is an area that Tutu Angeenda, Lelu Tulukona Jua Kitafta Kura, it was not easy. And so that is why the household name Uhuru Mwege Kenyatta is being invoked. <laughs> All these stories coming out here are very well coordinated strategy. And that aimed at one thing, bringing the name of Uhuru Mwege Kenyatta. I analyzed to you that there is a revival of a Hustler versus Dynasty narrative because that Hustler thing is dead. The discussion about if you're still just the same way we are talking, and you know, kings are asking, why are you going after a man that people of the mountain say, you know, we're done? you and you know does it mean that the political currency of Rigiji is been depleted the way Musalia Mudavadi said Musalia Mudavadi once said that the currency of blame games um, is not going to be is going to be depleted very soon kindly subscribe to our channel I want us to look at this aspect very importantly President Ruto having realized that the numbers might be worrying from there, I see a possibility that the household name of Kenyatta, which is a big name in Gema, that's the truth. It's a big name in that area. Just the same way Odinga is a big name in Luanyanza and Mo is a big name in the Rift, if indeed it's still big. They have created this um, invoked Uhuru Kenyatta's name and the target is to identify or rather to brand him as an identical enemy of the region. Through that, you are whipping the region in some, you know, like, like that is their enemy. So they should all be thinking about it. And I dare say that the likes of Sabina Chege, they made that decision to cross over a bit faster. It was too early. It was too early. And in the fullness of time, wailing and regrets might come their way. It was too early. Because just look at it. Just a week walking across over AV. Oh, Uru Kenyatta this, Uru Kenyatta that. And I realize, Kwamba, Gashia was in church as if at heart, at our Kama Watu Nasema. Gashia was in church. Kashoka knew very well a late hawa kwanza nyande kupadana nukuru. There is a, something to create the minds of people, whip them and brand Uhuru as the common enemy and blame Uhuru as the person that has been behind the region lagging behind. That's what they want. See? And everything is going to be blamed on Uhuru Kenyatta. What is going on? The discussion about tax question is to is just to revive the blame currency. 
Katika hii hatuna pesa, hatuna hii, hatuna hii. Kwa sababu people have refused to pay tax or people have not, had not been paying taxes. In fact, they were talking about backdating the tax taxes from 1963 and but they can tell you that thing is going to collapse for some reason. So check lawyer Paul Mwangi's tweet, you'll see what he's saying there. So it's a currency to tell them that look here, Uru Kenyatta. And you know the tragedy here is it is the smoke screen. Before they know, the leaders will be soaked in a debate of whether Uru should pay tax or not, Uru security this or Uru that, at the behest of the real issues that is facing the mountain. Someone asked a question. So if the one point something trillion or billions that Uhuru is owing, allegedly, the government, if it is paid, is that going to address the three, three, three reforms that Gashagwa is going through? Is that going to? Is that money going to be pumped in the road projects that you are told Uhuru stalled? Is that money going to be injected somehow and it's going to be a subsidy on Unga so that the price of products go down. When we get that tax, are we going to easen our tax, the, 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 the amount of tax that we are leaving on products that is causing the inflation? Are we going to? <laughs> but before the time, the mountain will be celebrating some very quick gains for political whipping. Uhuru is the problem. And so, neutralizing Uhuru Kenyatta will be branded as a big breakthrough. And maybe other people buy it. Now, because uh, the president might have realized that numbers are worrying, and Raila Odinga is pushing further, there is a need to suppress Uhuru Kenyatta so that Raila Odinga's messages that are now saturating media spaces may be suppressed because it can even worsen it. <laughs> That's one thing. That is it. Lastly, this two I want to look at. Profiling the land question is to set up. Remember, the issue of the land has been a big problem, especially with the Kenyatta's, because there have always this discussion of that was grabbed, or this was given to who, and this was this. It's a very murky story. And invoking the tax question is just to portray Uhuru's government as a failed government so that people just sit in a feel-good mode that ah, the fact that Uhuru yuko hapa to I've been checking some tweets and I can tell you I look at the I follow bloggers that are supporting KK especially from that region there's so much stuck into Uhuru this Uhuru that Uhuru that then I ask myself why can't these people speak about the things they said Uhuru never did so that they can be done. And that's why I say it's a big trap. And my member of parliament, Babu, will say a long con. And if there is a long con, then Ruta is calling them. <laughs> I'm going to take quick games and not ask the questions. That's my take, guys.